Welcome to Silicon Valley Business, a show focused on highlighting the innovation and heart of Silicon Valley. I am your host, Oscar Garcia, and today's show is about getting your startup fund funded. My guest is a partner of F50, Catherine Valls. Welcome, uh, Catherine, to the show. We're excited to have you. Hi, I'm so excited to be here. So let's start off with the first question. Um, a lot of people are, are wondering, what is F50? So F50 stands for Fundable 50, and each season we find the most fundable founders, uh, startup founders in Silicon Valley, and we match them with appropriate investors, and we get them funded. Um, it's really disruptive and exciting. So um, it's, it's kind of a new thing that we just started. We launched on March 26th, and so far we've gained a lot of attraction. We've gotten a lot of uh, local and global investors on board to help these fundable founders. Well, so just three months ago is when, it, when you uh, launched. Yeah, it, it, time flies. <laughs> Wow, well, congratulations. Thank uh, you. So t tell us, how are the um, uh, F50 uh, folks uh, selected? So we have a couple of different ways. We have public pitch and demo days where um, there's startups that compete in front of a panel of investors, and then the investors kind of ask questions and then decide who wins, and the winners of those come into the F50. But we also have applications at www.f50.io where um, the Silicon Valley innovators can apply uh, their startup or startup founder. And then we look at things such as uh, team, uh, IP, traction, uh, what their product is and their revenue, uh, things like that. And then we decide if we'll invite them to our F50 boardroom. So. Mm -hmm. Twice a month, we have a couple of uh, private boardrooms, and we have uh, different panels of investors that come in, and then we, we talk with them, and we decide who is uh, fundable, and if everybody agrees or the majority agrees, then we advance them to the next level. Um, some of the uh, investors are partners of large funds, and then we also have a group of angel investors in our network, and um, they all weigh in. Mm -hmm. And if they believe that this is a successful startup, then they enter into the F50. Wow. Okay, so it's a very involved uh, process here uh, that you take uh, folks through. Now, uh, where did the idea of F50, uh, how did it come to fruition? So um, our, our main founder, David Cow, about six or seven years ago, he started Silicon Valley Entrepreneurs and Startups. He also started with a group of um, developers with iOS and Android, and that has since become the largest group of entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley. We have about 30 to 50,000 people in our reach, in our extended network. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them, um, We've had experience for the past couple of years connecting them with investors and um, some of their success. We figured that some of the top percent of those founders are um, they're either really educated and they've done this before or they're street smart, but we wanted to do something special for the community and we wanted to help these fundable founders um, find the support that they needed from investors. And David found that 60, over 60% 60 of the people from Silicon Valley entrepreneurs and startups were funded. And he said, hey, we're onto something. Mm -hmm. And there's a local and there's a global investment um, network where they want a piece of Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm and they want these um, amazing startups curated so that they can trust that they're fundable. And they told David, how do we get a piece of this action? And so F50 kind of launched and evolved out of them, and so it was kind of a, um, it started as a grassroots community-based thing, and now we wanted to help propel the best of the community into the F50 and get them the funding they need to bring their innovations to the world. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So um, you've grown very quickly, it sounds like. Yes. And um, talk about maybe some of the um, uh, growing pains or maybe some of the challenges that uh, F50 ha has experienced, if any, uh, so far in its growth. Well, it's, it's brand new, so some of the things that we 
uh, look at is how do we differentiate ourselves from other uh, groups that are uh, early stage investment and in helping startups. Um, we, we curate the founders. Uh, a lot of the founders are referred by partners of large firms um, and also companies that are um, 20 million plus uh, in revenue each year. So they know, they recognize um, who's a fundable founder in the community. Mm -hmm. So what we wanted to do is start with the most fundable founders and then um, try to get them hooked up with lead investors if they're not already and then as it turns out, the rest of the investors kind of jump on board when they're successful and they believe in their mission. Mm, okay. Um, so differentiating ourselves is a big part of it. Big part, I understand. What, uh, what are some of the mix of companies that uh, are currently going through um, F50? We have some amazing founders. Um, some of them are in mobile, um, ed tech, education, um, healthcare, um, mobile uh, enterprise, mm -hmm. um, also things like art, um, healthcare, um, and smart hardware. And it's kind of a natural evolution. We don't necessarily look for a specific sector and say, you know, these are the only sectors that we'll accept. Um, but right now, all of the hottest uh, spots in technology are are applying and we get so many applications and it's so great to see their innovations and have them approved by the boardroom and get them into the F50 opportunity. Mm -hmm. Talk about a little bit more about how F50 differentiates itself from other early stage um, funding companies. Sure, um, there's a few ways. Uh, first of all, the F50 are all curated by a group of investors. Um, so we go through a pretty stringent uh, criteria process to make sure that they're qualified. They have the team and the IPO and the traction and the product and sometimes they have revenue a lot of times and also they have a prior investment history. And then the investors kind of curate that group and then we have online and offline opportunities to match them with the appropriate investors. Mm -hmm. We have a private co-investment platform, which is something that we do online, but before our big event, we have a 60-day match funding process where we go through all of the investors in our network and we look at what sector, sectors they're interested mm -hmm. in and we have face-to-face -face meetings with those um, F50 innovative founders. We also have a network of uh, F50 mentors that we bring on their influential thought leaders in the community and they, they help us and they help the F50 if they have questions. And another differentiating factor is that every investor on our platform is committed to a 50K investment to each company. So it's not like the company is just gonna get uh, $10,000 mm -hmm. or a token fee. Um, all of our investors are willing to commit 50K to their innovation, okay. which is a lot different. So the online and offline matching, the uh, curated investors, curated startups, and the mentoring are things that we do to differentiate ourselves. Yeah. Excellent. Now, you mentioned a little bit about the platform. Mm -hmm. um, tell us how this platform uh, works. Sure. So right now we have a private um, online co-investment platform and the investors are, um, they log in and we make sure that they're accredited investors. We have large funds from around the world. We also have um, local funds and angel investors and um, they go online and it's a first blush chance to meet all of the curated F50 startups. They can find out information about the companies and uh, how much they're raising, how much they've already raised, um, what they would do with the money mm -hmm. and their vision for the future. So we just um, launched on April 23rd and we have that in place as a, a chance to get to know each other. It's like a dating or a courting process. And if they're interested in the F50 companies, then we can arrange, facilitate face-to-face -face interactions and they can decide if they believe Good. in this founder and want to invest. Good. What, um, 
And I want to get to, because I know you have a very important event coming up here at the end of the month, and yes. I'll get to that in a minute. But, sure. Um, what advice do you have for uh, someone that is looking to get funded? Well, a lot of our investment network, uh, just from experience, watching pitches, hundreds of pitches, and listening to our investor network, uh, some of the things that they ideally look for is um, that the founders are full-time. They want to make sure that there are a couple of founders. You don't want to invest in a company where if that founder, God forbid, got hit by a bus, <laughs> mm. there would be no company. So you want a team, a team that maybe has experience or a good educational background. Some of our F50 founders are from uh, Stanford, Berkeley, MIT, Princeton, mm -hmm. and they collaborate with co-founders. Another thing that we look for is, have they secured um, intellectual property protection so that they can um, um, make sure that other competitors can't do what they're doing right, right away? Right. Is that protected? We also look at traction um, since they started. Um, how how much success have they got? How many users or followers or you know how viral is their mm -hmm. idea going? Um, and then they also look at is this product amazing? And then a lot of our founders also have um, revenue. And another important thing they look at is prior investment history. Okay. So if they have a lead investor or somebody that has already endorsed them and said, yes, we believe in that, then that um, goes a long way. The due diligence has sure. already been done. And so other people can jump on board. Right, right. Now, um, Silicon Valley, this is the epicenter of innovation. Yes. But we also have other regions uh, in the country that um, are also hotbeds. Austin, for Texas, up in Seattle, and uh, you know, in the East Coast, uh, New York area. Um, have you, uh, has your organization, um, are, are you thinking about expanding to other cities? Um, sure, of course. Um, we, would, we would love to scale because we love to promote innovation. Uh, right now, we're focused on uh, Silicon Valley innovators. As you said, this is the epicenter of innovation in the world, and all of the global investors want a piece of what is our secret sauce over here. Mm -hmm. And as you know, I mean, you're a fellow innovator. Uh, you've done product development and sales, and um, you've brought a lot of companies forward before you um, brought innovation out in the forefront. We're going to start with Silicon Valley innovators, but we do perceive uh, the need to expand, to scale mm -hmm. eventually. Right. Okay. Now, the June uh, event, uh, yes. it's a huge event. Um, tell us uh, about this event. Uh, what does it entail? When is it going to uh, start? And Sure. So we have uh, F50 funded. Uh, that's what we call it. And it is a red carpet celebration of innovation. Um, it was kind of an idea I had, and the team was behind it, to put um, innovation on the map, mm -hmm. to inspire people, um, not to have like a reality show or you know something, but to have something real, where they're bringing something that improves the quality of life mm -hmm. to everybody. And um, telling their stories is really motivating to these people. So we're going to have artificial intelligence, robots, um, uh, green technology, kind of different sectors of the community that we want to um, encourage and inspire. Just, mm -hmm. you know, these are your everyday heroes. They're not like um, musicians or actors or um, athletes, but these are, they're, these are people that are so passionate that they're willing to take big, huge risks and um, disrupt and change the way the world works, and we want to celebrate that. So we're having a red carpet uh, celebration, and our team is so excited to bring this. It hasn't been done before in the Valley. We're going to have a 1,000 invitees. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's by invitation only. Okay. So these are probably about 800 qualified startup founders 
and at least a couple hundred accredited investors attending the event. We also have the largest delegation of um, top tier angel investors from China, about 60 delegates will oh, wow. be in, okay. att in attendance. So there's people from India and Russia. Um, they all want to see what we're going to do, mm -hmm. and they all want a chance to access these innovative uh, people that we've found. Okay. Yeah. And then what, what is the date again and the, the time? So the dates are uh, June 23rd. It's kind of like a, a pre-match celebration at the end of the courting process for the investors to okay. make sure, you know, yes, we want to endorse this company. And also we're kind of doing a F50 funded boot camp training to help other entrepreneurs that want to learn about different things like um, traction, legal aspects, how to scale their company. Um, sometimes they don't have access to this information. Mm -hmm. So on the 23rd, we're gonna do that. And then on the 24th, that's our um, big finale where the F50 companies will uh, pitch and demo and okay. it'll just be a celebration and we'll announce somebody from our community will receive uh, one million dollar at least um, investment oh, wow. offer okay. and we anticipate we're really trying and we expect that 10 of our F50 companies uh, there's going to be a little more than 30 for season one and we figure that a third of them are going to get the funding they need to bring their innovations to the world oh, wow. so on the 24th is a big event that we're so excited about Wow, it sounds like a very tremendous and, like you said, very exciting uh, event and a uh, lot of anticipation. I'm sure a lot of these founders are very nervous, uh, but at the same time, probably very excited about uh, uh, the event. They're ready. Uh, our founders are uh, pre-Series A. They're okay. looking for traction capital between 500000 to $2 million. So they are past the seed round, and they are... Um, presentable and fundable and they're ready mm -hmm. for this opportunity so a lot of them aren't nervous at all they're they're oh, okay. ready to launch yeah. their things and we have kind of a sweet spot in that in that sector excellent now where is the the million dollars coming from so the million dollars is a um, it's a co-investment we f50 has a fund and we co-invest we also have um, a lot of the f50 have lead investors um, in the community and elsewhere, and um, it's kind of a collection of co-investments from the mm -hmm. local and global community yes. that make up the the one million dollar investment offer. Okay. So it's it's not just us; it's a bunch of um, investors that believe in um, specific innovators. Right. Right. How does the or how can the community get involved uh, in in this event? So there's a few ways. Uh, we welcome the press to attend. Um, we are also looking outreaching community sponsorship. Um, so we have uh, a few sponsorships um, you know, left if they want to come to the event. We also have uh, VIP tickets. Okay. Uh, we have some very special VIP events. Uh, there's a, a match funding trip to Napa. There's a special opportunity at uh, Kelly Porter's house, which is an amazing mansion. It's where we're going to hold our F50 member summit. Mm, okay. And um, it's kind of on June 23rd. There's going to be so many investors in attendance, as well as uh, the best of the best of mm -hmm. our fundable founders. Um, and then also, uh, we're drafting for season two. Mm. So if somebody has an innovative, disruptive startup and they're, they have the traction and they're looking to raise 500K to two mil, then we invite them to apply at f50.io as mm -hmm. a startup founder um, so they can apply. And any um, accredited investors are also welcome to apply to our beta platform to see what's up and coming. Right. Okay. Excellent. Wow. Now, after the event, what are um, your plans uh, moving forward? So this isn't um, like a one shot and we're done. Mm -hmm. We plan to do this um, uh, two or more times per year where we curate up to 50 of the most fundable founders. Um, it's kind of a uh, stringent application process but we want to build uh, trust in the investment community so that they can see that these are viable startups ready to 
um, get the traction capital to see how they're going to use the money. And um, we're going to do this a few times a year, have this red carpet celebration of innovation. Right. And our goal is to get as many of our F50 companies funded mm -hmm. so that their innovations can come to life. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, th I used to work uh, for uh, several startups or three startups uh, before and uh, back during the dot-com uh, period, but the, you know, 2000. Um, and uh, I definitely see a, a difference between the startups then versus the startups today. It almost seems like today um, the startups need to be, be much more, um, much uh, more uh, grounded, uh, more, um, like you mentioned earlier, some traction and, you know, a product that really truly uh, is promising. Not that in the past it didn't, but it just seems like now there's just a lot more um, um, things that a startup needs to do before they can really move forward. Are you seeing that uh, as well with, with uh, these uh, founders, these companies that you're uh, looking at, that they just have maybe more, th their, their T's and I's uh, dotted more so than than before? Absolutely. Um, I would say that um, we have a lot of applications and you know the bubble the bubble was burst and so we're looking for the the top quality people. Um, we have a lot of applications and some of them just aren't quite ready yet. Mm -hmm. So um, when they have the their full time and they've got the team and the traction behind them uh, some of our companies come from uh, Y Combinator or 500 startups, so they've kind of been they've been polished. They've been trained to mm -hmm. speak with investors, and um, yeah, uh, we we definitely get some dreamers that aren't quite ready. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're our job is to curate the best of those to make sure that they're successful, because it's not just about getting the funding at the event. It's about will they have a successful exit in, in three to seven years right. after. Um, you know, we, we want them to succeed and mm -hmm. so we're doing everything we can to help and it starts by picking the best founders. That seems like it. So let me switch just a little bit, uh, Catherine here. Um, tell, tell me about your background, how you ended up in this uh, industry. Sure, um, I was doing my doctorate in neuroscience at Stanford. I was really interested and in, involved in healthcare, and um, I, I went to medical school. And then, while I was there, I kind of was working on my own startups and uh, helping other people build theirs. And I'm a, a local and native to the valley, so I was always um, drawn to innovation. And I guess I had met some people and dated some people that were doing these really cool disruptive things and, and making a lot of money and there was all this excitement and buzz about their innovations and um, I wanted to be a part of that. So a couple of my startups, um, I'm the creator of Love Deficit, which is like a, um, it's a dating blog for San Francisco Bay Area mm -hmm. and also the Innovation Initiative is, is something that was a, a brainchild of mine that kept like tapping me on the shoulder <laughs> while I was in medical school and I really felt that my mission, one of my callings in life was to um, interview innovators, get their stories out comparable to what you're doing mm -hmm. and inspire other people uh, throughout the world to, to innovate and to do something and if they have an idea to go for it and make it happen. Right. And then I, I started attending um, like meetups and different kind of entrepreneur events in the ecosystem. I hosted some events for like um, Google, Intel, Sony, mm -hmm. Microsoft, and I really loved it. I loved meeting these innovators. And um, the passion got so involved that I, I eventually met David Cow and Silicon Valley Entrepreneurs and uh, they agreed to have me on board. So it's it's been an awesome ride. Yeah, well, it seems like it and you're doing just a Phenomenal job, and obviously with your background as well, uh, you know, uh, you're just uh, a great uh, spokesperson. And for you them. have a similar background. You really understand uh, from the entrepreneur's expect, uh, perspective what they're going through, and, and, and you've been there, and now you're at a quintessential point where you can we can help them and get them the visibility that they need and deserve. Yeah, definitely. No, well, thank you. Um, just before we wrap up here, I wanted to ask you, um, what are three characteristics that a 
founder or an entrepreneur um, are just absolute must, in your opinion? Mm, that's um, passion, dedication. If they can get a team on board, mm -hmm. like a really great team, uh, then that, that says a lot the per about the person. It's mm -hmm. not just like their vision, but somebody else with a great background um, comes on and agrees to do it. And I also think uh, like I, IP, if they have like an idea that's so amazing and disruptive, if they're, if they're smart enough to realize how great it is and to protect that and, and to move forward and their ability to mobilize the community behind their, their idea, um, then they're going to be successful. Yeah, yeah, to, to, to do it. Well, it, I agree with you. The ability to um, um, have that vision, uh, get people to buy into your vision, and like you mentioned, you know, that passion and dedication, you know, the, the attitude of, because you're going to fail. Um, and, but, you know, as long as you never give up and you just keep, you know, run into a wall and try to figure out a way around that, that wall. So. The answer is usually in the wall. That's true. It's like if you don't solve that answer, then you'll keep coming up against that wall again and again in, in your life until you solve that problem. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it takes more than passion and dedication, but if you can uh, get people behind you in your belief, then uh, full speed ahead. Right. Uh, I agree. Well, Catherine, or any last word uh, with regards to F50, the event that you have coming up, or anything that you want to share uh, with us? Um, I would love for us to be uh, an influential private investment platform generating significant pre-Series A deal flow in Silicon Valley. Uh, early stage investment has a lot of risk. Uh, you, a lot of them don't succeed. You may tell yourself never again and then fall in love like mm -hmm. it's a, uh, the startup is a puppy at the pound, but you have to believe and uh, I would like the community to, uh, to innovate mm -hmm. and to apply to F50, to come check out the event. There's, there's a few tickets left and um, we're gonna have some press and media and uh, we wanna make it really special for these awesome innovators, uh, VIP gift bags. It's gonna be like the Oscars of innovation. Right. So um, we're just really excited. And we'll be doing this for, for years to come. So this is just our, our little snowball is building. Yeah. Well, um, I'm very honored to have you on the show and to be part of this snowball that eventually will turn into an avalanche of success. Uh, so I wish you much success to you, uh, to you and your team. Uh, and thank you, uh, Catherine. That uh, means for being a lot show. to be here with you. You're, you're such a, a mentor and an inspiration to us. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, stay tuned uh, next month uh, for our next show. And thank you, everyone.